Hey folks, welcome back to another video. I want to give you a small update on some plugins. Uh, first and foremost, Kick Ninja has a new update with a lot of uh, interesting features. So my problem with Kick Ninja was that when you drag in here, let's say an example, you can analyze it and then you can say attack, right? Then you hit import and then you can see here the kick layer or the sample layer is actually in serial. So the kick sample comes first and then it fades out into the oscillator. That's the blue phase here. And of course you could do this before. You could just go here to the amp uh, envelope and then bring this up. You can fade in more or less the original sample on top of the oscillator. But you can see here, you also bring in the low end of the kick drum sample and then you layer it on top of the oscillator curve then, which is a bit annoying. And now there's a new feature, you just drag in here, let's say a kick sample, and then you can say here, uh, perfect full. Everything is the same, import. And now the sample or the noise layer is actually on top and then you have at the bottom, the oscillator so the kick or the bottom end of the sample is cancelled out um, so you have you know, yeah you have then basically at the bottom the oscillator part here and on top you have only the filtered noise without the bottom end of this so it's um i don't know how it's called um let me check yeah perfect full exports the difference between original and the oscillator to a sampler. So they basically kind of invert or flip the polarity and then cancel out or remove the bottom or the fundamental of the kick drum and then use that sample as a top layer. So this is the oscillator part. This is only the top part. In my opinion, this is much, much better. Um, then they also implemented here some kind of base logging. I think I also said this was, uh, or a lot of people want this for some reason. Um, let's say you have here, this actually, it's the amp pitch envelope here. You want to change the pitch envelope here at this point. You can see it changes the phase or the position of these, uh, yeah, of the oscillator. So you can say, I just want to Say, oh, here, right click and say face lock. And this is sticks in place, and then you can change stuff before this point. Um, but the face is rock solid and stays in place. That's very good, in my opinion. Um, you can also right click and say pitch tracked multiple points now. This is possible. A lot of nice little features here for Kick Ninja. And I think at the moment this is probably, I would say, it's better than Kick 3 uh, because the interface is straight ahead, right? There's no menus, you don't have to go to a different uh, view or tab or anything like that. It's, you know, you can access it right away from the interface here. And you have for all these points, all these um, parameters, you can draw in uh, automation time which is really dope also for the effects here so you can get really creative with kick drums here in my opinion it's probably at the moment the best kick drum vst on the market i would say in terms of features uh maybe some of the stuff here is still a bit too small they work have to work here a bit on the scaling even though if you you know drag this make the scales a bit up here you can see most of the stuff is way too small I don't know if there's maybe maybe there's somewhere here's a scaling let me see 1.3 oh yeah it scales this up okay okay no. no no never mind it's okay so this is kick ninja so this is a nice update uh kick 3 also has a new update um it doesn't crash anymore when you close down here the window at least for me um i don't know what they changed additionally if there are new features but in my opinion here, this is a bit, you know, you have to click through all these layers. Um, I would say it was a bit better in Kick 2 in terms of interface, but you have more features. Maybe they can um, work on this a bit more in the future. 
But still, it's also a great quick, uh, kick drum synthesizer. The import works really well. Um, it sounds good. It does it does its job, right? It's um, uh, right up there with the Kick Ninja. Um, I think face locking is missing here still. Maybe they can implement this. So when you change here one of these points, right, the face doesn't change here for points later on in the line. Would be nice to have. So this is here Kick 3, also an update. And then I discovered this one here yesterday. It's called Note Grabber. And all it does is actually showing you uh, what it's spectrogram. Yeah, that's how it's called, a spectrogram. You can record here something from my uh, generative grid patch. And then what you can do with this is instead of just watching this here play, you hit stop. And then you can drag uh, here with the mouse and can paint in kind of notes, right? Pitches. Here's a note, there's a note. It's kind of a manual um, audio to pitch. And I think the big benefit of this is that you don't rely on an algorithm that does it does its job kind of okay-ish. Here you can do it manually and paint in notes and decide which kind of pitches you want to have as notes. Then you can drag it out here to an output clip. Just use this here then for, <clears throat> for synthesizer. And this is a very nice and very straightforward, very simple idea, which works very well. And it's not something new. You could do this before with Melodyne or with all the other uh, uh, tools or audio to MIDI tools. I think Ableton Live has also something like this uh, baked in. But here you can decide and can just paint in manually and decide what kind of notes you want to pick instead of relying on some kind of algorithm that does it okay-ish, but sometimes you are off and you have to remove certain notes and so on. So this is pretty nice and straightforward. I really like this. I wish they add something like micro pitch because sometimes I use here um, Eurorec stuff, which has frequencies in between notes, right? It's not really an A, it's not really an A sharp, and um, it would be nice to have your micro pitch or MPE in there, so you can drag out the MIDI, and then you have here a note um, with a it's a micro pitch here, right? So it's in between, something like this. It's not really F, it's something in between. Would be nice to have if they can implement this because I work a lot of non-pitched or in-between note material. Another downside is that, in my opinion, this is way too expensive. Um, when we go here to the website, it costs $49. In my opinion, this should be free or maybe $5 or $10 or 10 bucks um, because it's, it's just a spectrogram and you can paint on top of the spectrogram. I don't know. 49 bucks, in my opinion, it's a bit too expensive for this kind of technology. But that's how it is. Okay, I want to show you these three plugins I tried out the last three days, and I really like here all these updates. I also like this uh, plugin here a lot because it's just straightforward. And then I did something like this here. Um, this is a current idea. I'm using AI to code stuff, to code web applications. Here, let me just on. I can select here my loopback device. This is my internal audio driver. So I can record everything that's on my computer. So let's play your form. <laughs> back to the browser. You can see here then I try to code some kind of spectral analyzer in the browser. Um, there is, let's go down here, threshold. So you can pull down the threshold and everything that's above the threshold here gets analyzed for the most prominent 
uh, frequencies. So here we have D-sharp 3. You know, I'm doing a lot of the in D-sharp, so that's no wonder. Um, there's an average thing here. You can change the color of some of the stuff if you want to. Um, so yeah, this was more or less like an experiment. I tried to get something going inside of the browser and resize this and put it on a different screen. You don't need an application. You just open up a URL. It's spectrum.polarity.me and then you can use this. I put the link in the description below. So this was just a test, just for, you know, for experimentation reasons and playing around and trying out um, coding with AI. And it works fairly well. Also, the source code of this is on my GitHub page if you want to download this or if you want to, you know, dive deeper into it, you can do this. And yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, and leave a like if you liked the video, leave a, leave a subscription and also leave a comment if you have some questions, of course. And uh, see you in the next video.